Testing, testing, testing. Are we live? Oh, well, that looks promising. All right, let's share out this stream. what up what up let's go i was kind of curious how the chat would be different uh at this time of at this time of the day. So this is going to be interesting. This is going to be interesting. I'm curious if we're going to get new people. Galicio is here. Let's go. Uh, let's see what else we got. KJ, good to see you. What up, what up, what up? Happy Saturday. Happy Saturday. Yeah, no, I, I wanted to try to do one of these live streams later at night to see if we get a different audience going on. So this is super cool. I hope everyone's having a good weekend. Shane, good to see you. Good to see you. Let's see what we got. Homework grind. Guys, any questions, drop them in the chat. Uh, I wanted to fire up a live stream real quick just because I don't normally go live at this time. Uh, this is pretty cool, though. It's nice to see some different people in here. Uh, definitely recognize some people who are normally on the... Uh, the 12 Eastern live streams. Nah, no, no breaking news right now, Galicio. The uh, crypto market is nonstop, but um, the weekends, right? The weekends are tend to be slow in crypto, or at least right now. Um, it's like every single weekday, every single weekday, crypto is just popping off. But um, we weekends weekends have been slow recently. Rich, good to see you. Good to see you, Mr. Grim. How's everyone doing? New subscriber, yeah, guys. Make sure to drop a like on the stream. Also, uh, if you're new here, make sure to sub. Would love to have you on the channel more often. Um, Shane, this is your time, your kind of time slot. Yeah, normally it's tough to get them off at this time at night, but uh, I didn't have much going on tonight, so I figured let's let's start off alive and see how people are doing. Happy Easter, happy Easter, and that's for Matthew from Thailand. Thank you, Matthew. Thank you. Yep, happy Easter to everyone. This was like one of the first Easter's in so long. I haven't had Easter planned, so it doesn't even feel like Easter. This is one of the first Easter's in such a long time. I don't have any Easter plans, so uh, it doesn't even feel like Easter, honestly. David, thank you, thank you, thank you. I love making the videos. I'm glad you guys enjoy them so much. So uh, really appreciate that. Harlan, good to see you. Hello from Texas. Nice, nice, nice. Guys, if anyone has any, any topics they want to jump into, make sure to drop them. If not, I'll just start... Uh, talking about what I feel like talking about, but I figured I'd give you guys a chance to drop any questions you might have to start or else I'll just jump on something real quick. So uh, drop any questions in the chat. Oh, of course, that's the wrong. Jeff, good to see you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Yeah, guys, eventually we're going to do... Uh, we're going to start making the chat members only once in a while. We're just waiting to build up those, uh, build up those members. Let's see what else we got. All right. So w one thing we can definitely talk about is the ripple SEC case. Cause I know that's always, that's always a very interesting topic. And a lot of people have definitely, uh, been asking me a lot where that's at. Uh, Best ways to offload when the time comes. Uh, that's a, that's a that's a really interesting question. So best time to offload when the or best place or best strategy to do it. I think there's a lot involved in in that. Um, I always tell people right. It's important to understand that 
every form of custody has its benefits and every form of custody has its drawbacks. And what I mean by that, right? Um, a lot of people will say exchanges, right? You can't use exchanges. You never want to touch an exchange. But the one thing I'll say about that is if you are planning on taking a subset of profit and you know you're going to be taking those profits in the near future, then exchanges can be extremely useful. So I always suggest to people, right, if you do have a certain amount of any asset you want to sell going into the future, uh, it's not a bad idea to consider actually having that subset on an exchange already. Now, you're going to want to make sure you pick an exchange you can trust. Uphold actually isn't technically an exchange uphold is a custodian so that's a good example of right maybe finding a platform that is centralized you know is going to have liquidity blah 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 instantly transfer to a bank account that you can trust and it's worth keeping some assets there that's probably my best recommendation on taking profits the other thing i'll just say is we're likely moving into a future where there's going to be a lot more to do with your XRP. So maybe you're not actually having your XRP right just to dump, right? There might be um, a scenario in which you're actually able to lend out your XRP to generate a yield. You're actually able to stake your XRP. You're able to use your XRP in F assets. And these are all going to be ways you can generate essentially generate yield on your XRP. So that might change some people's exit strategies because if before your plan what right was just to dump all your XRP and then it's like, all right, that was my strategy. I bought XRP at 30 cents, sold it all at $5, right? Maybe that's your strategy, but I'm thinking it's more realistic as time goes on. You're probably better off keeping your XRP, using that XRP to lend out to generate income in the short term, but leaving yourself exposed to the upside of XRP if it goes to that $10, $15, $25 price range where I think a lot of people think it can go if XRP is as success successful as we think it can be. So it's just something to consider. I'm not saying, right, don't take profits. I think everyone needs to take profits, especially if you need those profits, right? Taking profits in the short term is something you're going to want to do in that case scenario. It's just important. There's going to be more possibilities than we've had before in the past, which is always exciting. Um, those are my main things around uh, taking profit. But uh, me personally, right? I, I, I'm younger. I have a high risk tolerance. I'm I'm working. So uh, for me, I, I'm going to be holding on to a lot of XRP, right? I, I Even if I sold all my XRP, I, I don't really have much to do with that cash. So me, I'm, I'm going to be holding a lot of XRP, but uh, everyone's situation is completely unique. And uh, yeah, you should just embrace your own situation. Um, Let's see what we got. Shane, um, no, I'm just waiting on some stuff, right? I'm just waiting on some stuff with that. Um. We can we can talk about that at another point, Shane. But if you DM me, I can tell you about it. But uh, it's wor it's being worked out in the background. It's just been a little bit of a hassle. Um, let's see what else we got? Do you think X? Do you think FXRP on the Flare network will be even more important than just XRP? That's a great question. I always like talking about FXRP. It's something I'm extremely excited about and something that I think is a little underappreciated. I think it's kind of slept on. Um, before I get into that, though, guys, just make sure to drop a like on the stream. It's really going to get more people in here, help more people see the stream. So I'd really appreciate that. Um, FXRP, I don't think it's necessarily going to be um more important than xrp because at the end of the day it is xrp now the cool thing is is as i see it it's going to add a lot of utility to xrp because it's going to be like xrp with superpowers but it's still xrp it's a derivative of xrp which in my eyes right is still xrp so what we're going to be able to do with fxrp is essentially use xrp in a collateralized way that offers us smart contracts, which is just very, very unique. It's novel. It's never been done before. And it's going to open up a lot of use cases to our XRP that we weren't able to do before. So it's going to be like XRP with superpowers. Now, I just say it like that because I don't think it's necessarily more important than normal XRP. And that's kind of what I want to stress here because it kind of still is XRP. So 
I think it's going to be a big, big utility ad for the XRP Ledger ecosystem. Um, it's really cool to kind of see that coming online alongside the automated market makers. Um, that's going to be something that's really cool because as I understand it, what's actually going to be able to be happening is you might actually be able to take your XRP, turn it into FXRP on the Flare network, and then the person who's actually behind minting the F, minting the FXRP for your XRP could actually be taking your XRP, putting it in an automated market maker, and generating liquidity on the XRP ledger. So it's a very, very unique system, and this is kind of what I talk about when I talk about the brand new financial system, because a lot of the things like we see being added today... Um, we try to think about how they're going to work in the future, but we don't actually know how they're going to play out. So we're really watching a whole new kind of financial system being built in front of us. And it's going to be really hard to sit here today and actually predict what's going to be made. Um, David Schwartz has a great example of this. He always talks about, hey, uh, when they invented the Internet, right, they didn't expect people to be using the Internet to make cat memes. Right. And then live stream internet video all over the world, right? These were just things no one was thinking about, but we're going to see the same thing in these new financial systems being built up. We're going to see all these different products that no one could have ever thought of at the time of them being created. What we do know is it's a very powerful technology and new things are being created every single day. KJ, awesome, awesome, awesome. Welcome to the member, man. Uh, great to see you here. I still got the jug. Even though we're not in the car, we still got the jug. All right. I'm going to scroll back and look at some other questions. Uh, new ones, feel free to keep them coming. Um, Infinity Trading Bot. I don't know much about trading bots, so I'm definitely not a person to be talking about trading bots. I know David Schwartz uh, has done some stuff with trading bots, but I just don't know much about him. Hey... Hey, do you think after this court case is done, would Brad turn around and try to... No, Brad's not going to sue the SEC, guys. It's just not really... So Brad has a fiduciary duty to his shareholders, right, to make as much value as possible for Ripple, the company. And making the most money for Ripple means Ripple staying out of court. Look, I understand it's not Ripple's fault there in the court case, right? Trust me, uh, you don't need to tell me that twice. But look, Ripple's going to make the most money possible outside of court with the SEC. Um, a famous story from uh, Elon Musk and Tesla was that... Um, was that uh, all the bankers for Tesla were saying, look, Elon, if you don't settle with the SEC, we're not going to provide you any more liquidity into the future. So, look, institutions don't like dealing with the SEC. Um, Ripple kind of has a big red flag being waved above their head right now whenever they walk into a new deal with an institution, which is unfortunate. But that should tell you all you need to know about whether or not Ripple is going to want to keep uh Starting new fights with the SEC, I don't think they're going to want to. Um, I think Ripple's going to take their win and move on. And there's really no point in Ripple tying themselves up with more cases because all of the litigation, right, can happen from the private side. Like people like John Deaton, people like Empower, people like, I don't know, uh, Fred Raspoli, right? These are the people we want attacking the SEC. There are people whose businesses won't get affected. Their businesses are actually benefit from these kind of things. So it's better to take on the SEC uh, from like John Deaton representing XRP holders than for Ripple to go back into the case. So that's how I see it. Uh, BRICS nations have been meeting with Russia in October to determine what blockchain to use for their market transfer value, gold, silver, commodities, XRP, XLM, XDC. Um, to be honest, um, the BRICS nations, right? Um... Look, I think the BRICS nations will probably set up uh, some kind of centralized system. Um, the problem is like none of the BRICS nations actually, I don't know, trust each other that much. Look, we're just moving towards a world where there's going to be a whole bunch of different centralized and decentralized payment systems. And the more different centralized payment systems we have, the more we're going to need decentralized neutral sources of liquidity like XRP. I don't think any single nation like Russia or Brazil or India, right, they're ever going to build any kind of currency on a decentralized currency. I think it's a lot more likely that they'll just use 
an XRP like asset in their system, right? So I don't think it's necessarily going to be built on XRP. I just think XRP is going to have utility in whatever they spin up. Um, look, we're moving into a world, right, where decentralized neutral liquidity is going to be critically important. It's a brand new financial tool. And uh, BRICS creating their new financial system is essentially taking the dollar out of its centralized role. The only way an asset like XRP really fails is if the entire world gets together and all decides, hey, you know what, we're perfectly fine just using the dollar going forward. You know, we're perfectly fine just all moving over and using the BRICS currency. That's that's the world where XRP fails. But that's not the world we're heading into, right? We see a more divided world than ever. We see individual countries more and more focused on their own internal economies and own internal payment systems. And the more we move into that future, it's just more important that you have a decentralized neutral asset like XRP, this kind of uh, permissionless liquidity that anyone can access. And I just think that world we're going into makes XRP really important. Um, I, so to wrap that question up, right, to put a bow on it, I don't think there's going to be any plans by the Brit, by the BRIC nations to say, you know what, we're going to use XRP and we're only going to use XRP. I think XRP seeps into whatever system they build now. Um, Ronaldo, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> uh, tell your wife I said hello. Massive shout out to her, and I appreciate you guys. Uh, uh, supporting the channel. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, you guys are absolutely amazing and shout out to you and your wife. I hope you guys are having a good night. Um, let's see what else we got. Uh, is XRP going to succeed? Look, and no one knows if XRP is going to succeed. Um, me, what I see on a daily basis, right? Is XRP succeeding? Um, I, I, it, it's insane to me. Uh, the amount of cryptocurrencies out there and how little most of them do, right? I see new projects on a daily basis and you just can't even wrap your head around why you even need a cryptocurrency for the project. Uh, it's just a fundraising mechanism. Look, you can, you have to call it for what you see it, right? There's very few projects out there that I believe really need a cryptocurrency. And that's what I really like about what's happening on the XRP ledger, right? People are just realistic about it. Um, a lot of the automated market maker platforms, right? They're not um they're not issuing a cryptocurrency because there's no need for them to have a cryptocurrency so there's a lot of pointless cryptocurrencies out there i think we're really in like a dot-com level hype phase and people are just buying whatever cryptocurrency they think is cool at the time that's pumping the price and it has nothing to do whether or not you even need a cryptocurrency in that system um I think we're a lot earlier into this than many people really understand, but that's why I'm so confident right on the uh, strategy that Ripple and XRP are taking. It's a top-down approach. It's working with institutions that are actually using the asset for utility. And I think over the long term, right, that's a winning strategy. But might, some people might disagree. There's a lot of people who just trade meme coins. They just buy whatever's hot. And for them, they have a completely different strategy. I don't think that's going to win over the long term. That's my personal opinion. But you, you kind of got to pick whatever you believe in. Uh, I think that's the biggest thing people miss out on. You can, you can take whatever thesis, whatever strategy you want on the market. But you, you got to stick to something. You got to kind of pick your style of investing. You got to pick your road. And you kind of just got to stick to it, right? So if you want to be a meme, meme coin trader, if you want to get into whatever's hot, go for AI tokens, try to pick certain segments of the market, you can do that. Uh, for me, one of the things that's always fa fascinated me about uh, cryptocurrency is its use in the financial system. To me, I see these things as a uh, fintech, a form of financial technology. So I want to go to the projects that I believe are making the biggest strides in actually disrupting the fintech sector, disrupting the financial sector. That's an asset for me like XRP. Um, I think some people think the approach is going to be bottom up, right? They think that a retail uh, subset of people is going to pick a certain blockchain and that blockchain is going to build up from the bottom. And then at the end of the day, all the institutions are all going to adopt whatever blockchain retail picked. I don't see the world going like that. I just don't. I see the world trending towards a place where um, 
the institutions are going to pick out what chains and what different technologies are going to be widely adopted for infrastructure. And the vast majority of people aren't going to care enough to set up a wallet, aren't going to care enough to do transactions on their own, and they're just going to plug into whatever systems the institutions are offering. So in the same way, you just kind of go to your Bank of America account today and you don't actually think about what different technologies are being used on the back end and how that yield is coming to you and what settlement tool they're using all of that's going to happen from the institutional side and yet you'll have hobbyists right you'll have people like us who have been here forever who care to dive in and try all these different things and move money around but the vast majority of people are just going to be uh, taking advantage of the technology on the back end and it's going to be rails for them so I've always taken the approach that the top down strategy will win, work with the big institutions, help them update their rails, help them update their technology. And eventually they're going to be able to actually build competitive products and compete in a regulated ecosystem. Now, that's not to say all the institutions are going to make it. I don't think all of them are. And I think we're going to see new massive institutions like Coinbase is a new massive financial institution. Ripple itself is a new massive financial institution. Um, Robinhood, uh, Uphold, right? These are all new competitors to the system, but I do think most of these will take a top-down approach. Um, I'm glad you like Fiat Leak in the background, right? What's better to watch than Fiat Leak? It's like a classic. It's like a classic. And I think like, I think it's kind of funny. Like Fiat Leak must be dominated by XRP holders. I feel like it's such an XRP thing. Um, such an XRP thing. I don't see too many other communities uh, really pull, pulling Fiat Leak, but it's one of the best. It's, it's like such a simple interface, but it's so satisfying at the same time. Uh, huge fan of Fiat Leak. I'm going to unplug this microphone on accident in a minute. It's going to like completely break the stream. I got to stop touching it. Um, do you see a world where XRP is anywhere between $500 to $10,000 per, to per token in the next two to seven years? Um, I think 500 is getting a little high um, in the next two to seven years. I mean, if XRP wasn't at least like 10 to $25 in the next two to seven years, like for me, that would be kind of like, oh, uh, like it was kind of a failed investment, right? Um, XRP for me has always been uh, a high risk, high reward investment. Now, when I say high risk, I'm not saying like compared to other cryptocurrencies, I mean, compared to like an IRA or a taxable uh, index fund, right? It's high risk and compared to those things. So you'd expect uh, higher market performance from something like cryptocurrency like XRP, especially with the amount of potential it has to actually just go transform the financial system, right? Those are things that you would think would really make the price rip. So I do think XRP has a very good chance to be in the double, maybe even triple digits at the end of that seven year range. That's what I think is possible. But look, I'm I'm just taking a shot in the dark, right? Um, no one when Bitcoin was trading at a dollar could have said Bitcoin was gonna be sixty thousand one day. Um, no one probably thought XRP at half a penny was ever gonna be worth fifty to cents to a two dollars, right? Um, people never thought Tesla when it was $2 would be trading for 500. No one really can predict these things. It always goes higher than people expect. So, uh, do I think 500 to 10,000 might be a little much? Yeah, I, I do. I think maybe like if XRP is still a dominant cryptocurrency in 30 years from now, maybe we can get into discussions about those prices, but it's such a toss up. Uh, for me, XRP is severely undervalued. Uh, if it does achieve the things I think it can achieve one day. And if XRP really does do the things I think it can do in terms of adoption, I think it's going to be at a much higher price than today. So I don't hyper focus on numbers, ranges. Like I, I don't think anyone's going to be too upset in a $25 versus a $35 XRP. Just like the same way, I don't think it matters if you're buying XRP at 40 cents or 30 cents or 25 cents or 60 cents or 70 cents or a dollar. I think when it's 10x to 20x higher, people aren't going to really care what price they got it at. They're just going to be happy they got a game-changing amount of price appreciation. So I don't hyper-focus on numbers. For me, it, it, no one's going to get it right either way. So what's the point in spending 
hours of my day trying to think of what price it's going to go to and it's going to go to a different price anyway. Uh, that's just how I see it. I know some people like to dive into that stuff. It's just not really my thing. Um, will you hold XRP if it seems it stays the same price after the bull run of 2024, 2025? I'll hold XRP until I don't think it's going to succeed. So if, if there's another cryptocurrency that takes over and becomes the new uh, cryptocurrency all, that all the big banks are adopting is better liquidity. It's doing all the things Ripple said Ripple could do and Ripple fails. Like that would be why I would sell XRP. If XRP still is getting more adoption and we see more and more central banks being onboarded every single week and we see more and more builders and more and more volume and all these things trending upwards for the XRP ledger and XRP is still trading at the current prices, look, I'm going to be baffled, but I'm not going to be selling my XRP. Look, I think it's that's kind of an unrealistic scenario, to be completely honest with you, but I think it's a fair question. For me, price doesn't dictate my investment. Um, fundamentals do. So eventually, history has told us that price catches up to fundamentals, and the better and better and more powerful and more adoption a technology gets – it price tends to follow. So look, if XRP is the one anomaly in human history where you have this game changing network, this game changing cryptocurrency, this game changing tech company Ripple getting worldwide adoption and somehow XRP is the one asset in history that doesn't move. Look, I, I, I don't see that happening, but I guess, right. That's just the, that's just the risk you have to take. Uh, so it's more to me, I, I need to watch the fundamentals and I, I just want to see things get better and better throughout time. And for me, that's what I'm going to be watching rather than specifically what the price is doing. And yeah, do you actually see the SEC allowing tourists to rule settle my settlement midnight hour after Ripple uh, slams them next month? Look, that's a great question, uh, Montana. Um you know, I, I, if I was to tell you, right, that the SEC wouldn't have settled by now when I knew how bad the SEC was losing, I would have said you were insane. Um, the SEC has just gotten battered this entire case. It's it's shocking how badly they performed in court, and they haven't settled to date. Any logical person would think the SEC would have to settle. It It's insane that they haven't, but... That's kind of all I can say in regards to it, because any logic you try to apply to the SEC in this case just backfires like you wouldn't have expected them to do half the insanely dumb things they've done thus far. So trying to use common sense is just a failure when evaluating this agency. So I completely agree. Why would the SEC not settle? Why would you ever let Judge Torres rule in this case? You get absolutely nothing from it. Um, you picked the worst fight you possibly could, and now you're going to get all this kind of court uh, court president against you into the future. But it's just like whenever you try to take that logic and apply it to this court case, it just backfires because the SEC is such an illogical agency. So, Montana, I, I if I was to say what I think should happen, it would obviously be that the SEC settled this case immediately but we're just going to have to see what happens. It, I think you make a great point. It's just that you can't make good points with the SEC because they'll always deceive you with stupidness. Guys, make sure to drop a like on the stream as well. I don't think I can actually... Oh, 157 likes, 300 people on the stream. Let's see if we can get above 200 likes. That'd be sick. Um, Nick Gonzalez, nice to see you. Um, SEC asking for $2 billion means they lost. Yeah, you would, I kind of thought, I kind of thought the SEC asking for that $2 billion and then going into the settlement negotiation with Ripple that day meant that settlement negotiations were trending in a good direction. But uh, I, I talked about this in my video. Stuart Alderati put out a tweet after those settlement negotiations and he was like, look, things aren't even close, essentially. So um, I don't think Stuart Alderati put out that tweet or puts out that tweet unless like those settlement negotiations went terrible, which it looks like they did go terrible. Um, so it's just back to what Montana was saying, right? Look, Montana made a great point for why the SEC should settle this case immediately. 
but you're, we're running out of time for the settlement to happen. We just get closer and closer to this thing going the distance. Um, so it's, it's just so funny. You can't, you're kind of just left speechless when you try to evaluate the SEC strategy. You kind of just sit there like, why, why, you, you, do you just enjoy losing? Like, was your strategy just to keep losing? Because other than that, nothing really makes any sense. So uh, it's it's always been funny to think about. There's a lot of different things in the XRP ledger ecosystem and how XRP works and how Ripple's litigated this case where I can kind of sit there and think for a bit and kind of draw some conclusions on why certain things would go a certain way. The SEC's logic is the one place that never works for me. I just end up kind of in this this rabbit hole of confusion. Um Do you think it's manipulated or not? Uh, I do think XRP is in some way manipulated. I don't know how. Uh, my guess, based on XRP's price movement, is that there's a bunch of institutions with big, uh, with big sell stops at, at prices above market price, and essentially, whenever XRP uh, takes all the sell stops out, it immediately shoots up to the next sell stop, and then the price instantly gets sold back down. That's the only thing I can think of on why XRP would move the way it does. And the reason I say that is just because XRP moves so irregular to any other cryptocurrency out there, the price action doesn't make sense. So the only thing I can think of is that there's massive institutions that just have these huge sell walls at certain prices. And as XRP kind of takes out a certain sell wall, it gaps up to the next one, hits that sell wall and gets sold back down. I can't think of any other reason why the price would perform the way it does. Um, look, you can always make kind of like a case like, oh, it's, it's just buyers and sellers, right? But it doesn't look like any market I've ever seen before. It's so unique. Um, that's the best I've been able to think of, right? It, it's another great question. One of my favorite ones to think about but it's 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 a weird phenomenon. You you don't see any other cryptocurrency really move like XRP. And then you tack on the fact that the only other cryptocurrency that does move like XRP is XLM, and it just gets even more confusing. Uh, one one of the most one of the most confusing things uh, in crypto that that's right up there with trying to understand the SEC's logic and uh, maybe trying to understand Gary Gensler's logic as well, but. I think that's probably my best guess on what happens. What are we at? Oh, 200 likes. Let's go, guys. Fire me up. I took a quick look to see what we got to, and it was 200 likes instantaneously. Massive props to you guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You killed it. You killed it. Um, What else do we got? Uh... Yeah, I think we will. Look, I think XRP uh, couldn't be more prime than it is. Um, just, I, I always think it's important to look back at the uh, look back at the um, 2018 bull market, right? XRP had no indication it was going to rip, and then it just ripped out of nowhere. So XRP is going to have its moment. It's going to come out of nowhere, and uh, people who weren't prepared are going to be left off sides. That's how I see it happening. It does feel massively manipulated for sure. There's some there's something interesting with the way XRP's markets are made. I, I can only think of that's the sell. Sorry guys, one second. Um, let's see. Ripple has bots to buy and sell it. Yeah, Ripple does have bots. I don't know if they're still using those bots. Um A lot of people misunderstand that. Look, of course Ripple has bots. Uh David Schwartz talks about all the time how he has bots on Solana. Bots aren't necessarily bad. Bots create efficient markets. Uh, do I trust Ledger? Uh, not really. 
Uh, look, I don't think Ledger is going to have any catastrophic. Uh, I don't think Ledger is going to have any catastrophic. Um, what do you want to call it? event where suddenly like all the ledgers get hacked? Like, I don't think that's realistic. If Ledger just seems like a little sloppy to me, they have good software. They're just a weird company. I, I don't, I, I'm not a fan of their management. So I don't personally really trust Ledger. I can't say I like Ledger, but I don't think anything terrible is going to happen to your Ledger or anything like that. It's, you know, self-custody is such a tricky subject. It's such a tricky subject, but I wouldn't be scared of using Ledger. I wouldn't be scared of using Ledger, and I don't think you should worry if you use Ledger. Um, I'm going to do a quick, a quick PSA to everyone out there. Um, this is the only way you should be scared. This is the only way you should be scared. Um, look, I'm not a technician. I'm not a super technical guy when it comes to this kind of stuff. But uh, just from being around, the things you should never do is you should never save your seed phrase to your computer. Uh, you should never type your seed phrase if you can help it. If you have a cold wallet, you want to make sure you're really only interacting in that cold wallet as little as possible. Um, you don't want to have a cold wallet hooked up to a whole bunch of dApps. You don't want to have a cold wallet. Um, that's going to be your primary transaction uh, vehicle. I always tell people, if you're going to be hooking up a bunch of dApps to a cold wallet, you're just kind of destroying the purpose of the cold wallet. What I always highly suggest people to do is you have your cold wallet. Silver Days, good to see you, man. Good to see you. I didn't, I didn't see you pop in. It's always good to have your cold wallet as like your five to 10 year fund. If you're looking to interact with blockchains applications on a daily basis, buy Frost, um... What do you want to call it? Xanum. I mean, uh, Zum, uh, Xanum, whatever you want to say. It's, it's such a hard name to say. I don't know why you would name it that. Um, those are the kinds of wallets you want to do to transact. Uh, cold wallets, you just kind of want to have on the side and not really touch them. It's for long-term holdings. And then like other funds can be on exchanges. I always tell people, utilize whatever form of custody for its own purpose. But you don't want to be having your cold wallet right be something you're always using hooking up dApps to you don't want to ever save your seed phrase to your computer uh you want to punch your seed phrase into something metal if you can these are just kind of general practices that i think are going to help you out the bi the biggest no-no is typing your seed phrase on your computer like please don't do that and don't save it to your computer and if you did Maybe get a new, maybe get a new cold wallet and just move the funds over. That's what I'll suggest. Um, oh, here's another one. I'll do one more since we're just on the topic. Um, be very careful of any emails you get. Very careful of any emails you get. I always tell people if you get an email from an exchange saying that you need to do something before you do anything on that email, go to the exchange and click through your settings and just see if you have any warnings in your settings, because typically you don't have to interact with whatever the exchange needs through an email. You're better off just going to the exchange and checking your account. So if I get an email from Coinbase, right? And Coinbase is saying, oh, hurry up and type in your seed phrase here right you're about to lose your you're about to lose your account at coinbase if you don't type in your seed phrase before i go and do that in the email what i'm gonna do is go to coinbase and click around there and say oh i don't see any warning in coinbase so just be very skeptical of any email or text you get it's always better to say no for the most part because worse comes to worse you can just say yes again later so that that's my advice there. It, it's a tough topic, and I probably missed like a million things that are is also good advice. But um, I think it's important that we at least cover it a little bit. I know it's not always the most interesting topic in the world, but it's good for anyone to hear. And if I could help at least one person not get scammed, I mean that's that's good for me. Let's see what else we got. Let's see if we can get more into XRP talk. 
Uh, I always see so many questions on cold wallets and you, you kind of get sucked in a little bit. It's an interesting topic, but there's not really much more else we could say about that. We need crypto banks with FDIC insurance. I think that's where Uphold is headed. I think Uphold will have that. The problem is right now, insurance companies want nothing to do with it. The insurance companies are like, no, we're not insuring that. What do you mean? What do you mean the funds can just disappear and we can't just reverse the transaction? Insurance companies are like, what do you mean? Like, we're not going to insure that. So that's why insurance companies aren't doing it right now. I think they will. And that's why the XRP ledger added clawbacks. The XRP ledger added clawbacks because they're like, hey, if like a bank wants to build here, we can't tell them like the funds are gone, like get over it. That's never going to fly. So that's why the XRP ledger has clawbacks now. So if Bank of America wants to build a token on the XRP ledger. Oh, let's go. Ed and Daniel at the same time. It doesn't get much better than that. It's seeing two guys enter the chat and seeing Ed and Daniel pop right in. Um, I want the next enter to be Hall's Balls, Crypto Clay, and then Murdoch. That would be sick. That'd be sick. Let's go. What up, guys? What up? What up? What up? Um, you severely derailed me, though. I had no idea what I was talking about. Oh, um, yeah. I think I think we're gonna trend towards uh an industry where there is FDIC insurance on accounts. Oh yeah, and then Ripple's clawbacks. Uh, I mean, the XRP ledger clawbacks. Yeah, so the, in the future, right, if an institution wants to create an issued currency on the XRP ledger and that institution has FDIC insurance, they don't have to tell the insurance company, oh, sorry, we sent the cryptocurrency to the wrong wallet. Now it's gone forever. That's why they're going to have clawbacks on their account so they can actually get the money back if they need it. Uh, these are things that I said at the time needed to happen for the XRP ledger to really adopt real world institutions because if you don't add features that real world institutions need to abide by then no real world institution is going to be able to build on your system because they can't abide with abide by what the regulators are saying they need to follow so um you can kind of see ripple strategy kind of playing out they're really building or distinguishing the xrp ledger than any other chain out there as a chain that institutions can actually build on in a compliant manner yeah, Daniel, I had nothing going on, and I was like, you know what? I'm going to spin up a live stream and see how, uh, see what the crowd looks like. Definitely a lot of new faces at this time of day, a lot of new people who I haven't recognized. It's going to be cool to look at the YouTube stats after this and see, um, see the difference in uh, who tuned in. It's going to be interesting to see how many new viewers I have on this live stream compared to normal. But uh, I would love to start doing more live streams throughout the day because... These are so much fun, and you guys always ask the best questions in here. It makes it so interesting. Um, let's see what we got. Let's see. I, I got a little little stat here. All right, ne next goal is 300 likes. 300 likes. Let's see if we can get there. Uh, two new members. That's dope. Uh, I can't see new subscribers, but guys, if you're here right now and you like the live stream, make sure to sub. I uh, love doing these live streams, and it's always... It's always best if you're subbed because then if you're subbed, uh, you get notified when I go live and you don't show up like halfway through. Uh, so I always tell people, right, because people always show up in the chat and they're like, oh, uh, I'm showing up and it's like halfway over. It's like, yeah, make sure you're subbed. Uh, we'll make sure you get it uh, instantly. Morning from the UK. That's funny. That's funny. You don't even think about that kind of stuff. Uh, it's so cool that these live streams meet so many different people. Uh, so you get people all over the world. Some people, it's the middle of the night. For some people, it's morning. Good morning to you. Good morning to the UK. I have one of my roommates is in the UK right now, actually. Uh, he's in England, and he says it's rainy and cold. So that, that's what I got from England. He was uh, he went to England, right? Uh, and he was only supposed to be there for a week. And then he flew all the way back to America and then he gets told right after coming back and like just complaining to me the entire time. He was like, it was cold. It was windy. He's like, the food sucked. No, no offense if you're from England, but he didn't have a good review in the middle of winter. Um, but hey, he got back and he was funny. He's like, oh, I'm just glad I don't have to go back. Comes back and his company instantly sends him back out for another four weeks. So we've been like busting his balls about him having to go back there. But... 
I thought that was pretty funny. Daniel, Daniel, Daniel. Thank you so much, Daniel. Oh, man, you're the best. Thank you, Daniel. Daniel is one of the biggest supporters of this channel. Daniel, thank you, thank you, thank you for all you do. Daniel, you're, pro you're probably the person who I'm most excited to meet when I go to Vegas, honestly. I'm so excited to meet you there. Uh, super hyped up that you said you were going. Uh, Ed, Ed, Ed. Ed, are you going to Vegas? That's what I want to know. Am I going to get to see Ed in Vegas? Ed said, Flair's grown to a whopping 482,000 wallets. Wow. That's impressive. That's really impressive. I think Flair is going to be a home run. I, I really do think Flair is a home run project. Look, the, all the biggest FUD around Flair was all this... Uh, all this FUD around the airdrop that people were just getting free money for. and They were just complaining about how much free money they were getting. So I, I think Flair has got a lot of good things going for it. And I think when the biggest FUD about your project is... How you gave away free money, right? That's like the funniest FUD you can create. I always joke around with XRP FUD. It's like people throw all this FUD about the XRP ledger, but none of the FUD is actually true. Um, it's so funny with Flair. It's like all the FUD they could create about Flair had nothing to do with the project. It's about when people got their free money, which is which is funny, right? Like if your biggest complaint about the project is when you got your free money, then you got a pretty good project. Damn, Ed. Damn. Would have loved to see you there, but... Uh, I understand the grind. I understand the grind. Uh, what are your thoughts? How taxes should work? Those 1,700 pre-allocated contracts paying long-term capital gains, right? Eric D. XRP. Good question, man. I don't know. Uh, I really don't know because I'm pretty sure. I don't know how those contracts would work, actually. I don't know if the contracts are based on when the contract is executed or if it's from when the contract was established i don't know that's a good question eric d i, I don't have an answer for you uh, i can sit here and guess but my guess is just as good as yours i, I would think they were long-term capital gains but that's a good question that's a good question evernode's a great project man if i could figure out how to buy evernode Without going on BitTrue, I would um I would absolutely love to buy some Evernote. I just haven't figured out an easy way to do it. I can't say I've tried that hard. Uh, just because it's so new, right? It's not it's not like I'm in any kind of massive rush to get as much Evernote as possible. I think um you'll be able to buy Evernote for the next two to three years and you're still gonna be early, right? These things were so, so early too. I think people forget that. So Evernode's a great project. Um, I love the head of the project. He's a really, really cool dude. Um, it's awesome listening to him talk. Uh, Evernode is almost as a Cody as 2.0. And I'm not going to lie, Evernode's so advanced, I can barely even wrap my head around what Evernode is. All I know is all the smartest people in the room drool over it. And uh, it, it seems to be doing some really cool stuff. So I am, I am a big fan of Evernode. Um, it's funny I say that because I could, could barely even comprehend to you what Evernote does. Um, but it's one of the things I always say about investing, right? Uh, you always need to understand who the expert in the room is and you can't be an expert on everything, but if, if you're smart enough to understand that you're not going to be an expert on any, everything, but you can help surround yourself with people who are experts on certain things and you can kind of use your own judgment around their expert opinion you can really expand your knowledge depth by leading on the expertise of other people and leaning on the things they understand and using your ability right to kind of generate a more layman's way of understanding the technology or a layman's version of understanding the investment thesis look you can get a lot of knowledge about a lot of different things in the world without actually having to become an expert on those things. So I always tell people, right, um, find people you trust, find people that you can really work with, help you understand these things, and you can really expand your knowledge base. Johnny O, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Um, Johnny, you're absolutely incredible. Um, thank you so much for all the support you give these streams. Uh, it, it's truly incredible. So Johnny, thank you so much. And look, man, if you have any kind of question or anything you want answered, please drop it. Please drop it in the chat. But thank you. I, I really do appreciate that. Um, Johnny always comes in at like the most unexpected moments with 
just a bomb of a donation. I I'm so appreciative for it. So thank you so much, Johnny. Um, Evernote is available on Uphold. Um, I know it was, and then like the buy thing got disappeared. Um, I need to check that again. Uh, I think Evernode. It's on Uphold, but you can't buy. Exactly. Yeah. So um, I'm going to have to start paying people for their Evernote airdrop. I'm going to be like, please. I I'm pretty sure you can get it on the Zao How Network, though. I'm pretty sure if I made an account on the Xamon wallet and connected to the Zao How Network, then I could swap my... XHH token for the ever token. I think there's a way to do it. Um, but instead of doing that, I'm on a live stream at 11 o'clock at night. So may, may, maybe the next activity for the next next uh, night live stream will be me trying to get my hand on the Evernote token. I'm going to resort to just tweeting out a link on uh, X and being like, I'll pay you for your Evernote. I'll start buying people's airdrops from them. Be like, I don't want to deal with this this decentralized exchange and swapping i'll just buy your airdrop from you uh ed let's let's see what ed's got to say ed's always got some great questions thoughts ed, ed, ed ed's in my private chat and ed always sends me like the most interesting like topics ed i always get so excited when you drop me a dm because i know it's going to be something that gets my brain going a little bit ed said thoughts with enough liquidity into enough cryptocurrency pairs, it no longer makes sense to swap into them and and out. The bridge asset instead just starts making more sense of creating a pool of two reserves to make the markets. This is how reserve currency works, but takes global network effects. And you're one hundred percent right. Uh liquidity pools and um so you're 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 mostly right, Ed. You're mostly right. So automated market maker pools are kind of a game changer in how these markets work, because the old thesis was that you go from um, centralized asset to XRP to centralized asset. That is still critical if you don't have tokenized value. What you're saying is 100% 100% spot on, but you need tokenized value to create those pairs in a decentralized way. So, automated market makers, I believe are the future of the world we're heading into where everything is tokenized and when you create these liquidity pools rather than having um the swap into the bridge asset but the bridge asset is still going to be completely critical for centralized solutions for centralized solutions you still do need a bridge asset because you can't create those native liquidity pools and that native liquidity in an ecosystem so i believe the future is automated market makers and liquidity pools but i think right now and at least for the next 10 to 15 years i still think there's tremendous use case for a bridge currency um the technologists, right? The technologists in the room will tell you that automated market makers will take over in the next four years. But I think what we've learned is that technology takes a lot longer to cement itself in financial in the financial world than any other ecosystem out there. So I think it's a lot more likely that for the next 15 to 20 years, a bridge currency is still going to be a tremendous application. And as we kind of move into a world where everything's tokenized, um, you have uh, more of a use case for the automated market maker uh, to really source native liquidity on the chains themselves. Uh, what do we got? What do we got? Bobby, Bobby. John Page, that's a good question. One of my, one of my favorite ones. Oh, Ed, you're you're spot on. Whichever comes fastest first, exactly. Um, this is a good question, and this this one got me excited. John Page, can Ripple pay its fine from its escrow? John, hey, look, technically yes, but they don't need to. Look, last time I checked, Ripple has close to a billion dollars on the balance sheet. Um, Ripple has plenty of money. Just pay it with cash. Um, the fine isn't going to be anywhere worth near 2 billion. It's probably realistically max going to be 500 million. 
absolute max realistically probably like 200 million maybe 100 million so i i think the i think the discussion about whether or not ripple could pay it with the escrow is interesting they're just not going to need to they already have the money and ripple can just raise more money if they absolutely need to if they wanted with a private offering of equity Ripple has a lot of different ways to raise money. They don't have to go to the XRP escrow. Technically, they could, but there's a lot of other options out there. So um, Ripple could go public, right? uh, raise from the public markets. They could raise from the private markets. There's, there's so many different things. They could issue bonds. There's like a million different things Ripple could do as a company. And they already have the cash already in liquid form on their balance sheet. And the fine is likely going to be minuscule compared to what they have. So the good news is, is I just don't think they would need to. And I guess the even better news is, is if they absolutely needed to, and if it was whether Ripple, the company dies or they raise the money, the money's there. It's in the escrow. I don't think they're going to have to touch it though. Good question though. I, I, I love that kind of stuff. Um, let's see what else we got. F assets going to be yeah F assets are going to be a really cool bridge and look one of my favorite things about the F assets I I've lost my phone now for just, it's been a minute since I've located this thing uh, the interesting thing about F assets I believe is the collateral bridge using the flare token so I love the way it's designed with actually using flare as the collateral for the bridge I think that's genius. I think it adds like such a cool um I think it adds such a cool mechanism for uh flare in that network. So, uh, I'm I'm really excited about the F assets. Um, happy Easter. Thank you, Harley of Earl. Thank you. We should start a pool to see who gets closest to what the fine will be. 100 XRP to the winner. 22 million, Ed. I like that guess. I like that guess. Um, that would be fun if we had a, like a little pool going. I'll have to think of a, oh, I think maybe we could do something on casino coin, Ed. I think we could do something on casino coin. Um, I think we could, I think we could start a massive bet on casino coin, um, on what the fine will be. And then it will automatically execute to whoever gets closest. So if anyone wants to set that up, I would love to jump in. I think Daniel would actually get really excited if we did that. So Daniel might actually like that. We might be able to get him to do all the hard work for us. But if that was a thing, I, I would do that. I would enter that. And we could get like, even if we got like 10 people in at like a, uh, on a couple hundred XRP, that, that'd be fun. I, I'd be down. Um, look, if anyone wants to facilitate that, I, I would 100% do that. Sorry guys, I'm on I'm on girlfriend duty real quick. Real quick, I'll be off in a second.
All right, sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm back. Whew. I had to go on boyfriend duty for a couple minutes. We're back, though. Um... <laughs> uh, Daniel. Uh, thoughts on render? I think render is cool. I don't know if... Uh, I don't know if render is going to win out. To me, it seems like that's something centralized computing. Uh, centralized GPU computing is going to dominate, but who knows, right? It's it's a little too... Look, I think the token's been amazing, and I think the project's really cool. I just don't know enough about it to give you like a real evaluation on how it would go. Uh, I, I'll, I'll tell you guys. I'll tell you guys that hi. Uh, and she, she, she jumps on, she jumps on once in a while, but she definitely doesn't listen to everyone. She has to listen to me enough as it is. <laughs> oh, Daniel, exactly. <laughs> right, just disappear to the bathroom and start up a live stream. That's gonna be the next live stream. It's just gonna be me in a bathroom, like hiding from whatever I'm supposed to be doing. Be like, I'll be like 30 minutes, just me live streaming from the bathroom. Uh. What's stopping out institutions outside the U.S. from using XRP? Surely the case wouldn't affect them. No, it, it the case isn't affecting them, and they're adopting XRP, right? Um, guys, we're just very early to even institutions with legal clarity uh, fully understanding how to use these digital assets, right? We're watching a lot of the testing happening in real time behind the scenes in terms of SBI, right? Being the first bank to use XRP as a settlement vehicle. So like all of this stuff is happening in front of us in real time. But when you have kind of like Ripple getting sued by the largest financial regulator in the world, um, look, you can build out all these different test pilots and start using XRP for smaller stuff, but we're still in the early stages of this thing really taking off. So there's a lot of other countries, right, making massive progress with Ripple. We see Ripple working, I think, with close to probably 30 central banks in the world. Whether or not these are just talks or partnerships, I believe five, they're already working on production-grade CBDCs. 15 they have like actual real world pilots going and then close to 30 of them are just test production but these are the kinds of things right that are like xrp getting that adoption in the real world in these other countries now my personal thoughts are that it's very likely that these institutions are just working on centralized instances of the xrp ledger and until they're really ready right to flip a switch and start using the decentralized ledger they're just going to stay in their testing environments these are things that aren't going to just be switched on uh the second they start testing right they, they're going to test these things for a while and in many cases, there might have to be a trigger for these systems to actually be put into effect. But eventually, there's going to become a time in the world where they just need to be put in effect because we're moving to faster, more real-time systems. And I think that's likely what we've seen. I don't think we've seen that even level of testing yet in the United States because of the SEC. So I think the rest of the world is starting to test. We see Ripple working with the Digital Pound Foundation. We see... Ripple working with banks in Thailand, right? It, it's the adoption is happening in other countries, but it's still that adoption is more of tests, pilots, small transfers, uh, ramping volume. But ODL is growing hundreds of percent year on year. Um, more and more institutions are using XRP every single year. Um, it, it's 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 just something that takes time because of the conservativeness of financial institutions. Linda, good to see you. Good to see you, Linda. Great to see you. 
Um, Montana, that's another great point by you. Um, bring down the walled gardens. Yeah, that was one of my favorite quotes by David Schwartz. Look, David Schwartz is one of the few people you can listen to, and he really gives stuff away on how he thinks his system's going to work. And David Schwartz really kind of let you know, know all you needed to know. Ripple's building centralized walled gardens for all these institutions. And these centralized walled gardens are testing environments for what ultimately is going to happen on the public XRP ledger. Um, as we move into a world where these things are more widely adopted and not as scrutinized and can actually be used for their full intended utility, a lot of these financial institutions are going to take down the walls, just like you said, Montana, bring down the walled gardens. And these are all going to be connected through the decentralized public ledger. So I think that's the world we're headed into. I think Ripple would be dumb not to build what the institutions want. Right now, the institutions want centralized software. But I, everything tells me that Ripple knows that they're going to want decentralized software as well. And that decentralized software is going to be the XRP ledger. So um, that's always how I've seen it. Um, I don't think there's really a scenario in which we move into uh, a next generation financial system and we just stick with centralized software, but that's the bet, right? That's the bet. We're betting that decentralized cryptocurrencies are going to play an important role in the next generation financial system. And if you think they will, then I don't think there's a better bet than XRP. Um, I think Bitcoin's a completely different bet. I think Bitcoin's a bet on um kind of a safe haven away from governments away from the institutions and i think xrp is hey bitcoin's cool but what about if we actually use this asset in our financial system so bitcoin will never be used in the financial system i think xrp has all the benefits of a bitcoin but actually something that's useful to institutions so if you believe bitcoin's important because of its technical ability to move money anywhere in the world instantaneously or, you know, in instantaneously relative to the old system, then I, I think you need to understand that XRP can be used in a more efficient manner with institutions, especially with the help of Ripple building them interfaces to help them understand. Yep, uh, XRP still is going to be used on the Flare network. Um, is it possible to s no titty freckle? Uh, most of the uh, XRP price glitches aren't actually XRP price glitches, and it's just centralized exchanges that have the glitches. Um, and it's because centralized exchanges run out of liquidity. Um, think about it this way if Coinbase for some reason ran out of XRP, um, and say they had 10 XRP left and say your only exchange you could use was Coinbase, you might pay more money for those XRP. Like if Coinbase was the only exchange you could get XRP from and Coinbase was only had 10 XRP left, you might pay $3 for each one of those XRP. Um, obviously right now you probably wouldn't do that, but if the price was looking like it was making a big move, things might be different. So a lot of the times the price glitches that people see are just exchanges running out of their asset and then that asset getting bid up, but it ultimately gets arbitraged away because, you know, I could just go to a different exchange if I have that regulatory ability and take advantage of their liquidity. So I don't think an exchange would stop, would stomp out the stop orders. And we also don't even know if those stop orders that I was talking about earlier even exist. Look, I haven't heard a better strategy for why XRP moves so linearly or vertically up in the air and then gets shot back down. Uh, the best thing I could think of, right, is there's stop orders that sell down the price whenever it gets to certain sell walls. And the more stop orders we break through, um, the more XRP has a chance to really, really, really get some movement going. Um, you know, it, it's hard to say. It's hard to say why XRP moves the way it does. but. Does AI know when we'll see a settlement? Look, AI is AI is cool, but AI is not a fortune teller.
All right, guys, I think I'm going to close down the stream. Uh, I am so shot. Uh, I, I played a long five hour round of golf today and uh, I almost passed out as soon as I got home and I ended up not sleeping. So I am just I am just dead at this point. Guys, thank you so much for coming. This was a lot of fun. Uh, shout out to Daniel and shout out to Johnny. And there's someone else who donated earlier. Let me try to find your name real quick because, look, I everyone who donates should get a shout out regardless of how much it was. Um, It was early. You know, I, I'm sorry for whoever donated earlier. My stream doesn't let me go back that far. Um, Thank you guys so much for supporting me. Um, You guys are absolutely amazing. Uh, super glad to see you guys hop on at this hour. Got to see a lot of different names, a lot of different faces. So if you are hopping on for the first time now, uh, make sure to sub. We do these live streams all the time. Would love to have you a part of them. Uh, guys, thank you so much. I hope everyone has a great night. And for now, Mikkel out.